back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So I am here today to review two books. One is a YA book, which is Dreadnought by April Daniels, and the other is a novella written by the queen of science fiction, Ursula Le Guin. This is The Word for World is Forest, and it is part of my SF Mistress Work series. So let's start off with Dreadnought, which is by April Daniels. This was recommended to me by Eleanor from Eleanor Reads Books. I will put a link to her channel below because she has great recommendations all the time, especially for YA, which is somewhere I don't read a huge amount but when I do I usually trust Eleanor's opinion and this one sounded right up my street straight from the moment she mentioned it so I knew I had to get it. This is a story following a superhero called Dreadnought who falls from the sky and dies right in front of our main character who is called Danny and Danny is a trans character who is born as a male but completely believes that she is female and she is a trans character. She has known it all her life. She identifies as trans, but not openly. So no one else around her knows that she is trans. She has a pretty rocky relationship with her father who is very masculine and definitely believes in showing off masculine traits and doing things like football and doing things like that are seen as masculine. So Danny and her father have a pretty rocky relationship and it would definitely be more rocky were Danny to reveal that she is trans. So she doesn't, she hides it and she's never really thought about how she can tell her parents it's always been an unrealistic goal until Dreadnought dies in front of her and Dreadnought's powers are transferred to her making Danny female which is something that Danny is super thrilled by because of course it's what she's always wanted, it's what she's always believed she needed to do but she never had the courage and she never had the motivation to go and do it until now. And of course, not only does Danny have the real problems of growing up and being a teenager and being bullied and being upset by people around her who don't believe in the differences that she has and don't trust or support her, but she also then has to contend with the fact that she's a superhero now. She is expected to take on the evils of the world. There are plenty of supervillains in this world and she has to defeat them. She has to overcome the fact that she's just turned into a female, something she never expected to really happen, and face the fact that there are people who are actively trying to hurt her and the people that are part of her superhero team. And she's doing all of this whilst being a teenager and growing up and dealing with general life and school and everything like that. So it's a pretty rough thing to go through. What I really enjoyed about this book was that it felt super lighthearted and fun, but it had some really deep, interesting themes that I thought were handled very well. I think the balance of the superhero plotline and the trans plotline was really, really even. So neither one overtook the other and they both let the other one breathe and have room to develop and have room to expand and become an emotional and exciting story. And I really, really liked that element. I thought that was a great thing for April Daniels to give credit where credit is due, not only to the young girl trying to face the superhero and be that person who everyone thinks is invincible, but also the young girl trying to just come to terms with her own sexuality and gender and everything that surrounds that. So I just found it really, really wonderful to see and really eye-opening and really great to see that in just a YA superhero book. Um, something I don't usually expect to see and it makes a real difference when it is part of the story because it should be part of the story, it's just normal and it's something that needs to happen more. So I really really enjoyed this, it's a super fast fun read and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars overall so I'd definitely recommend this. Another one that I would 100% recommend is The Word for World is Forest by Ursula Le Guin. As I said, this is a SF masterwork, so it counts for my SF mistress work project. It was actually published in 1972, and it is a novella which is part of her Hainish Cycle. Her Hainish Cycle series is kind of a intergalactic series which follows very different groups of alien races including some people who are quite human-like um, and some races who are much less human-like 
and this is part of that series however each one can be read as a standalone I believe you don't have to start with any of them in particular but I started with The Left Hand of Darkness which was a great start point for me so so far this is my third Ursula Le Guin book I read The Left Hand of Darkness the Dispossessed and then I read The Word for World is Forest and I think that is a good reading order but you could easily pick this one up as your first Le Guin and it would make perfect sense and be great. So I love this book, it was so very much what I've come to expect and understand about Le Guin's character. She likes to write books that explore themes of humanity and acceptance and understanding different types of people kind of very similar to the April Daniels book but in a much more adult way um, this follows a culture of people who have gone to a new planet they are called the humans and they go to this planet which is hugely and densely populated with trees they are from a kind of earth-based civilization which has gone to shit shall we say the world they originate from was covered in resources at one point in the history but the point in history where we have come to they have mined everything everything is totally destroyed there is basically nothing left except humanity crawling all over the surface of their planet and trying to survive so when they find this completely rich planet filled with greenery and lush planks of wood and trees they know that they can go into this planet harvest from this planet and send the logs back to their planet for the people who are living there. So that is exactly what they do. They go in, they destroy, they colonize, and they try to take over this world. However, there is already a race of aliens who are living there, which they call the creatures. And these creatures are kind of like green furry creatures who live on the surface and are part of this world. They care for it, they're peaceful, they're fun loving, they enjoy being in each other's company and they have a really serene happy way of life until these people come and invade it and start destroying everything they've ever known. Many of the creatures are whipped into shape and into slavery by the humans who come and invade and they do not like that. They are unable to fight back because they have never in their lives had to fight with one another. They are very peaceful people, they don't even understand the concept of killing until they see it in front of them. So when they are invaded they are very easy for the people invading to tame and it becomes quickly a large population of slaves who are working for the humans to fell all of these trees, treat them and send them back to their planet. But luckily there is a dissenter in the ranks of the humanity of the humans and this person manages to connect with the creatures and is a translator of their language. He works with them, he explains to them the motives and the, the reasoning behind what the humans are doing and he also helps them to understand ways that they could potentially fight back against this invading force. So later in the book we get to see some really horrible bloodshed between the two cultures and some very interesting planned attacks. There is a lot of exploration of the creatures culture and how they have developed over time, the things they believe in and the things that they worship and praise. And we also get a look at the real brutality of humanity and how desperate people can be to take things for themselves, to claim things for themselves that they don't even think about the after effects and the way it can change and shape and ruin things for others around them. So it's a beautiful novel as all Le Guin's books are but it's also really tragic and thought provoking as all her books are and she certainly explores these themes really really well in a short number of pages. This is only about 128 pages and it's excellent, absolutely excellent. I certainly feel like she is an author who takes a slight bit of time to get into but once you are into her stories they are so thought provoking and wonderful that I just, she's great. So I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, it's excellent, it's one I would hugely recommend to everyone. Basically any Le Guin book that I've so far read has been excellent so I fully intend to read all of her books and yeah I'm, I'm just loving the Le Guin journey so far she's magnificent so if you haven't already read any of her books try this one or try The Left Hand of Darkness both are great places to start and let me know if you do pick up some of her work or if you pick up Dreadnought by April Daniels let me know your thoughts on both these down below 
thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys! Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book Then come back and chat with me again